When Beretta decided it wanted to make a 5.56 by 45 millimeter rifle, they didn't want to just license some of their design. They came up with their own, and that gun was the AR-70, which of course did have some Eugene Stoner influence. To understand the Beretta AR-70, you have to put it in, in historical context. Gene Stoner had divested himself of the rights to the AR-15 uh, mechanism. His next task was to design an even cheaper rifle without violating his own patents that he'd signed away. And he designed the AR-16. This was unfortunately in uh, 7.62 NATO. Well, nobody was interested in 7.62 NATO. They wanted 5.56. So after he had left Armalite, an engineer by the name of Arthur Miller downsized the AR-16 to 5.56, and it was called the AR-18. They tried desperately to sell that gun to the United States military to supplant the AR-15, but timing is everything, and that, that the other gun was already too far down the road to catch. Beretta has been watching all of this going on and saying, you know, that AR-15 is pretty expensive. We could build a better gun cheaper. And so they set about to combine the best attributes of the stoner guns and the caliber of the AR-15 with a gun that was a little more substantial than the AR-18. It didn't look like a tin can. Think about the Beretta AR-70. You think about a, a fairly modern looking combat rifle uh, but really it was it was it was of a piece with that class of rifles that was sort of between the World War II era guns and and what we have today so in the early 70s Beretta set about to move toward a, a, a gun from whole cloth that was designed to be modern and take advantage of modern manufacturing techniques and uh, more importantly to become in concert with the NATO standard for a 556 or 223 Remington uh, chambered gun. They designed a, a sheet metal but very substantially constructed gun. It worked extremely well. They called it the AR-70. And it was, it undercut the other guns in price which was, everybody was astonished how, how, how Beretta could do such a thing. Well, they were good at it. Now, the AR-70 borrows some from the SIG 530, uh, and it is a gas piston design, uh, with the gas piston uh, riding in a tube above the barrel. The bolt itself, uh, the front of it, looks a little Kalashnikov-like, uh, but it was actually quite a good design. The sights uh, were very much like the US M16, and it really looks like a 1970s rifle. The Italian military did not adopt the AR-70 in large quantity. I think only a few special units uh, got it. But Beretta sold quite a few of them in Indonesia and in some other countries. And uh, sadly, the gun did not get as much exposure as it deserved because it is extremely reliable, shoots well, beautifully constructed, and uh, was really, for its day, a state-of-the-art design. Now, the AR-70 has not been imported into the United States in some time, so when you do find the rifles, they're actually quite expensive. That's all the time that we have for this week. If you like this show and you're not an NRA member, you need to join today. For more information, go to AmericanRifleman.org. I'm Mark Keefe, and I'll see you right here next week on American Rifleman Television.